we just go down the line and say, uh, say and spell your names mm -hmm. and what school and what grade you guys are in. Okay. So Sam, S-A-M, um, and I go to Chatfield and I'm a sophomore. I'm Maggie, M-A-G-G-I-E. Um, I go to Dakota Ridge High School, and I'm a sophomore, too. Maggie, what's your last name? Smith. Smith, and what's your last name? Craig. Can you do this with one more Yeah. <coughs> okay, Robin? Um, Robin, with a Y, um, Edquist, E-D-Q-U-I-S-T. I go to Dakota as well, and I'm a sophomore. Okay, very good. Okay, Rachel Hill, R-A-C-H-E-L-H-I-L-L, -L -L, and I'm a junior at Columbine. Okay, and just as a group, tell me about, uh, one more time, how you guys know each other, and how you all got connected. So um, we've all kind of got connected separately, um, me and Maggie especially through social media, um, just because we're both really politically involved and opinionated. Um, and so we kind of um, get connected through Instagram, Snapchat, that kind of thing. And then from there it's just spread to the rest of us just because we're all like-minded. Mm -hmm. How do you guys, uh, how long have you known each other? I've known Maggie for four years yeah. now. I've known Sam for probably about two. And Today is my first time with <laughs> Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I've known Rachel for like a year. A year. Yeah. yeah. Good friends or we like play it. volleyball yeah. together. Yeah. Well, Sam, let's start with you. Um, you were the one that emailed us first. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to do that? Why was it important for you to be sitting right where you are? Yeah, definitely. So um, I, after the Parkland shooting, I think we all had this kind of um, like this poll in our minds, and it was, it was really hard for us to process. Um, there was one particular video that a lot of us saw on Twitter from one of the students in Parkland, um, and it was inside the school um, right after the shooter had been taken down, um, and we just saw people that looked exactly like us. They had the same clothes. Um, they were in the classrooms that we were in, and they were um, laying dead on the floor. And that was really, really hard for a lot of us. And a lot of us were really touched by that. And um, it really inspired a lot of us. And me and Maggie had been talking for a little while, and we um, maybe wanted to organize a walkout or something like that. We just wanted to get our voices heard. Um, and I think we might be doing something like that in the future. Um, we can talk about that later. but. Um, it just kind of came up. We thought we could share our story, get our voices heard, um, talk about how we kind of have more fear to go to school now, which we don't think anybody should have. Um, but we wanted to get that out there. So you saw this where again? It was on Twitter. It was just a video from one of the students that was in the classrooms. You say that you have this fear of, of going to school. Walk yeah. me through that, that next morning when you woke up and said, I haven't walked into my high school today. Yeah, so um, after we saw it, it was definitely um, hard for a lot of us. A lot of us were just um, thinking this could totally happen in any of our schools. Um, it just seemed a lot more real than it ever had. And so there was just kind of this, this fear that's become more and more deep-rooted um, into who we are um, and our thoughts every day. Um, and I think Maggie and Robin might be able to speak to this a little more as they just had um, a, like a, an incident at Dakota. I was going to get to that in just a moment, but yeah. before that, um, you, you were saying that this time it was more real than it has before, yeah. and we're unfortunately in a time where we see shootings like this way too frequently. Mm -hmm. Why this time? So um, it's, it, I think it really is the fact that for some reason this time, the shooting was so well broadcasted on social media like um, Twitter. And I saw multiple people that were in the shooting, and I could see their Twitter accounts. And I could see that they looked just like mine. They had the bios, the same kind of jokes. They were retweeting the same things. They just looked just like any of my friends. They looked like me. And then to go onto their accounts and see their stories and to see videos like this where they're running out the hallway, jumping over their friends who are like lay bloody on the ground. It was just really hard. And I don't know that other events like this, other mass shootings, have been as well broadcasted. And so that really tied it back and just um, it hit home a lot harder than it had. That's a really good point. We were having a conversation uh, before, and maybe you guys collectively can weigh in on this, of uh, how in that moment students were able to capture what was happening, whether it was a Twitter video or even having the presence of mind to Snapchat it. Um, that sounds like maybe that was a big way that you guys found out and saw what was going on. Yeah. I think media <clears throat> has definitely um, brought everyone's attention to the subject and I think media definitely gives people um, inspiration yeah and I think that's a really scary thing like inspirations like 
I can go big, I can go better, I can, yeah. you know, end more lives. Mm -hmm. Those people think like that. Do you think maybe that's a part of the difference in, in, in this reaction of having so many kids is, you know, in the past, like in Columbine, almost 20 years ago, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have access to social media in the way that we did, and now it just brings it home that you almost can't avoid it. Right. How does that change your guys' reaction? Maybe, Matt, you can answer this. Yeah. Of your reaction to what you saw. I mean, the fact that with social media, you can see it, like, almost live. Like, you can see, like, with live streams and if people are, bro like, broadcasting it almost, you can see it when it's happening. And the fact that you can see that, even while you're in school, is, like, oh, like, wow. And, like, it just... You can see it faster, you can get more inf information about it faster, it's crazy. And like, I feel like social media is so great, because like, I wouldn't have met like Sam without social media. Like, social media is amazing, that's where we're getting our word out, but it has some scary things too. What happened at your school today? Um, so yesterday we got a threat, um, a person like Snapchatted, or like, it's really complex, someone took a picture of a picture and then put something like you guys better watch out like you don't come to school tomorrow if you want to stay alive and th that happening like five days after a massive shooting is just terrifying and no one went to school and it took away from learning and I don't know like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Sam was talking about how there is a little bit of this fear mm -hmm. now walking into school. Yeah. Is that something that you share too? Yeah I mean yeah, I mean, you can look around in, like, a hallway where there's a lot of people, and as negative as it is, you can be like, what if that person is the person that does it? Because they're so common now, why wouldn't my school be shot up? Do you, did you feel like that before Parkland, or was it after? Um, there's, like, always been a little linger, like, the thoughts lingering in my head, like, this could happen, because, I mean, we do lockdowns to practice, so, like, steps are being taken, and we have to talk about it. So, yeah, I mean, I've always been a little nervous about, like, just danger in school, but now I've seen it. Just like Sam said, I've seen the kids laying on the floor. And, and, and all of you weigh in on, on this, of the idea of being scared to walk into your classroom, it seems unfair. Mm -hmm. That is not something you should have to deal with. Mm -hmm. well, weigh in. Okay. Yeah, um, I do think it's unfair. I think that it's something that needs to be changed and I think it's something that can be changed and we see this happening and it's it's going to be really difficult to, to completely control the entire population of people in order to stop this so I think a much better way to approach this is gun reform and gun control and I think that it is really easy to do and I think that the reason it's not happening is because um, legislators at the state and the national level, level are controlled by special interest groups like the NRA and I think we all really steadfastly agree upon the fact that we think even universal background checks is a great idea. 84% of Americans support that. And getting that, just a simple background check to make sure that you're not on the no-fly list. If you can't get on an airplane, why should you be able to own an assault rifle? So basic things like that, an assault weapons ban, no civilian needs to have a military-grade weapon. If you're going hunting, you don't want to shred your elk into a million pieces. <laughs> like, you don't need this horrific mega weapon to do things that are acceptable to do with guns. Um, <clears throat> back to like going to school yesterday um, in the morning. It was probably around 12 o'clock on what month no Sunday night mm -hmm. so like pretty late um, we saw the picture and like you said media it just happens like that um, so we saw the picture and me and Maggie were talking like are we gonna go to school um, we were on edge we were scared but it was also kind of a not a movement yeah but telling the schools like this is really serious yeah there was probably I heard there was probably about eight kids in each class yesterday. Yeah. Like eight to ten kids. So a lot of us stayed home, not just because of the fear part, but to show how we are impacted by it. Yeah. And today, when, um, we both just got our licenses. <laughs> so we were in our cars, and we were like, it really hit us today. We are like, we could go into that school, and we could never walk out. Had that thought ever crossed your mind before? Not as prominently. 
like it's always been in my mind but almost like it could happen it might not but now it's like it could happen it really could happen and it's unfair that people can just like it was proved as a joke so like our principal this morning went on the intercom and said although it was a joke it was still a serious matter and people still called the police and although it was a joke it's unfair that people get to make threats like that to like scare us and we shouldn't feel unsafe at school because that should be our safe place to mm -hmm. learn and our safe place to develop as people and the fact that people can just make threats like that is saying something about how we need to take this more seriously. Mm -hmm. And Rachel, you go to Colin, mm -hmm. is there a, when, when you walk into that school for the first time, is there a discussion of what happened in 1999? Um, well, going to Colin, it's the same as going to any other school. And um, there are people that are in the school every day that were involved um, April 20th, 1999. And I've definitely heard stories, but it's not like it's, it, we don't talk about it constantly. We don't like to talk about it because a lot of the times our words get twisted and call minds victimized. So, and I think since it was 19 years ago, something needs to change because it hasn't yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I do have a teacher who I know very, very well, um, and I have a very close relationship with her. And um, she was in the shooting that day, and we just see um, the effects that it still has today. Every time we have a fire drill, um, she gets on the ground or has a flashback. It triggers her because the fire alarm was pulled during the shooting. Um, and so just little things like that, having to watch our teachers go through that, um, just seeing this this legacy continue. and. It's really frustrating, like Rachel said, to see nothing being done about it. In Colorado, there was some legislation in 2013 that passed universal background checks, and that's great. But we can do so much more. We can do more at a national level. We can do more at a state level. So that's really what we want to see as a result of this. So your teacher was in at Columbine? Yes, yeah, she teaches here at Chatfield now. So you guys have talked about changing you know, gun, gun laws and reform, but can you, are any of you 18 at this point or no? No. Talk about being, not even being able to vote and now being one of the most prominent voices at this moment in time. Are the kids, are the students saying something needs to change? Maybe we start with you, Rachel? Um, I think kids have a significant voice in today's society because of media. And the kids in Parkland are doing amazing things to organize marches and do all of that. And um, I think that as since we're the future of America and the future generation, our voices need to be heard because these the acts of violence that guns are causing directly affect us, and we should have a say in what affects us and what kills us. What did you think about you know the, the walkouts and the protests, the, the ones that we're even seeing here in Colorado now? What are your thoughts on them? Um, I'm for them. I think we should make our voices heard and do something. Um, I know there's going to be a march downtown on March 24th, and then a, not, or a walkout on March 14th, and I think that those are really important in in that in the way that people can or students can make their voices heard. Yeah, and just to build upon that, um, I think we all are going to lead our schools in the national school walkout on March 14th. Uh, we really want to get that out. We want to encourage as many people as we can to participate in that. Because being underage, we can't vote. And we are watching legislators who are um, way older than us, who are not affected by these laws. They're not in the schools, and yet they're making the laws. They're blocking any sort of gun legislation, gun control. And so we're the ones feeling the effect, but yet we don't have as much as a say. And so we want to get our voices heard through this walkout. We think it's a great way to do it. So we are encouraging all students of Chatfield, Dakota, and Columbine, of course, to walk out on March 14th, but also anyone in the state, anyone in the nation. It's a nationwide thing. So that's our call to action. And, and what do you hope? Oh, Robin? Um, I think um, <clears throat> with the marches and the walks, you're making your voice louder. You're, if you are not participating like as a student, you're making your voice a lot quieter. And you're making us look less powerful, like you're sitting there waiting for the next shooting to happen. What do you hope, when, when you do march, when you do walk out, mm -hmm. what do you hope will be that message and 
who are you targeting? And is it the lawmakers? Yeah, it definitely is the lawmakers. Um, we look at people like Cory Gardner, who received millions from the NRA, and in response he says, I've got your back, I'm not going to turn anything down. And that is, that's corrupt, and it's unfair to us as children who have to go to school. We deserve a safe place to go to school. For some people, it's the only safe place they have. They go to school so they can get away from things at home, maybe. And it's not fair for lawmakers, um, like ones we have here in Colorado, um, or even nationwide, to um, take these bribes, to be corrupt in this way, um, when we're the ones that are being affected. So we're marching against him, against other lawmakers nationwide. Um, we're asking the Colorado state legislator even um, to pass more gun control in Colorado. We can start smaller and work our way up. We're looking for really anything. We just want to get moving. We don't want to see this same stagnant progression that we've seen over the past 19 years since Columbine. We want change. It is kind of incredible. You know, this is at least from what I can remember, seeing students as young as maybe 14, 15, maybe even younger, finally taking a stand. Is it frustrating? Is it, is it, is it just enough is enough that it, we're at this point where we're yet at another mass shooting inside a school, nothing has changed? Yeah. I think it's almost like, what's, what is it going to take? How many people are going to have to have their lives taken in order for people to realize, like, this is so serious? Like, this is our kids. Our kids are dying because there, in my opinion, aren't enough restraints and, like, laws around who can have guns, who can't. I don't know, you know? It's just, I don't want to, in the future, if I have kids, if my friends have kids, to feel worried and maybe be hesitant to even send my children to school because this might still be going on if we're going to continue the way of what's happening. Like, I don't know, enough is enough, really. We need to change. And maybe one by one, we can go down the row um, and talk about what is, your, what is your plea tonight? What is your plea to the community? So really, I just want people to be more aware. I want people to realize that we have bipartisan, universal support for these measures, really. Like I said before, 84% of Americans are supporting universal background checks, and now over half of Americans are supporting a ban on assault weapons. And so I want people to realize that we the people are speaking and our lawmakers are not listening to us, and that is something that we need to reflect in upcoming elections. I just want it to be known that a lot, as we've said before, that school is a safe place. I know people where it's their only safe place. It is the place where they can be themselves without feeling judged. And I don't feel the same safety anymore. And I want um, everyone out there to know that if we take the right steps to have more gun reform, and I'm not even saying like that there shouldn't be guns, because shooting is a sport. Like, shooting is a sport. Some people feel the need to have a gun on them for their own personal safety. It's the automatic weapons and the military-grade weapons. And I just want it to be known that people like us aren't pushing for no guns. We're pushing for none of the ridiculously unsafe ones. Like <clears throat> Maggie said, um, the automatic rifles um, are definitely, like, the word just not okay for this type of environment but um, I think schools also need to have better security um, more police officers because you can walk into a school with a knife and kill people but um, guns are definitely a huge part of that and it's easier to take more lives with a gun and um, I definitely think security also needs to be more enforced and we aren't trying to take away people's Second Amendment rights because people, like um, Maggie and Robin were saying, people can still be able to have guns because it's a sport and people might need it for their own personal safety. But the automatic and semi-automatic rifles and those assault weapons shouldn't be allowed. And the Second Amendment was written at a time when women couldn't vote and black people were still considered two-thirds of a person. 
And just because it's written in the Constitution doesn't mean it can't change. Like, that's why it's an amendment. We need to change it. And talking about the school security, do you guys have any drills for active shooters or anything like that? I don't, even yeah. know, I don't even know what happened. Yeah, so. well, we do lockdown drills <coughs> now. Um, and so kind of what it is now is we get down, we turn off the lights, um, and we hide away so that every classroom looks the same, every classroom is locked. Um, and it, it, I think it has been a, a little more effective compared to Columbine when that um, wasn't a thing. There weren't drills before then. Um, and so that's definitely improved us. Um, and that's, that's pretty much the extent of it. We do that once a year. Um, we all know it well. Uh, and the Parkland students, the victims, the survivors, talked about how they were the most prepared high school in the nation. They did these lockdown drills constantly. There was nobody more prepared. So really, we, we can prepare and prepare and prepare, but nothing is going to change the fact that a mentally ill person, somebody who is unstable, can go out and legally attain this massive weapon and just walk into the school and go at it. And that is, that is really what we need to focus on. Or just a person in general that is angry at the world. They don't have to be mentally ill. Um, they don't have to be white. They don't have to be black. They can be any type of person. Any type of person can kill. It, I just think back to like me when I was in high school, when we were in high school. We never thought about this. You know? I never have to spend so much time thinking about what if, like you said, Maggie, I walk into a classroom and I never walk out. And now you guys are a generation that that is your reality. How do you, how do you process that? How do you cope with that? Rachel, want to start with you? Um, well, we do, yeah, like they said, lockdown drills every year. And um, we, it's just normal for us. We know what to do exactly, and at this point, I know some um, some people like uh, Sam was saying like during fire drills his teacher had like a like, bad reaction, but for students who have never experienced that like us, it's just part of our normal school <coughs> curriculum, and we're so accustomed to the idea of shooting that um, we I don't know I don't think we think about what it's really like. But after Parkland, it became so much more real to us. Do you ever think, oh wow, we were accustomed? the possibility of a shooting. Yeah, like we are, because shootings happen constantly in the news and we're like, oh, another shooting, and we don't, I think we haven't felt that until Parkland, how real that really is. Yeah, I'll like, I'll, I'll go through the news, because um, I get news updates on my phone, and um, I get all sorts of stuff like sports, the shootings, um, international politics, and at this point, sometimes I'll get these notifications, and if it's something like, like two or three students were killed in a shooting in Tennessee, like my mind subconsciously just scrolls right past it. I'm like, oh, that's just that's that's normal. That's, that happens, and I'll just keep scrolling. Um, and that's just such a powerful thing that, that that we're so accustomed to that that subconsciously I can just move right past that and not think twice. And then I stop and I think, I that that's not right. I shouldn't just move on from that. Mm -hmm. And like. For me, on the topic of being scared to go to school, like that's a serious thing. And I know people that day to day suffer from anxiety over being killed at their own school, but you can't live in fear. Like that's, I still have to wake up. We still have to wake up every single morning and go to school. We have to learn, it's our job. We have to, we can't live in fear that we're gonna get killed, but it's so prominent and it's there and it's everywhere. So it's, it's such a balance between not being afraid, but being ready because it could happen. Um, growing, <clears throat> sorry, growing um, up, like from straight from Columbine, I think it's just like we as kids have grown up with that mindset. Like you can get killed when you go to school or you can, you can get killed anywhere. Um, but for the coping, I think just like having friends and like having people to love on is definitely just like an amazing factor and the people in Florida or the children in Florida um, I think the people that it's important that they have people to support them and it's important that I have these people too. My last question for you is what do you think you know people watching this piece the community can do to help alleviate that that's a burden that you know you guys should not have to carry. Right yeah. 
Um, I think it's important that everybody gets out and they vote and they reflect um, they reflect what they want in their vote for candidates. So if your candidate is corrupted with um, bribes and donations from um, these massive corporations that are blocking our voices, um, maybe you don't vote for them. Choose another one, another candidate within your party. We're not saying that everybody has to go Democrat or everybody has to go Republican. It's not partisan. This is bipartisan agreement. If one of your Republican candidates is really pro-NRA and you have one that's not, go for the other one. There is such a wide variety, it's not a partisan issue, and I just think that's so important and that people need to realize that and start reflecting our voices and their voices and um, who they're voting for. Yeah, and I don't want people to wait for the next shooting to really take action. Like, what happens if there's another one after that? Are we just going to continue to wait? Are we just going to continue to let children die? Take action now. Like, the time is now. We need to do what we need to do to protect our children. I couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> um, you too, Sam. Um, I Just like they said, I think um, voting, going out, uh, standing up for what you believe in is um, the next step. I mean, we would, but we're just kids. <laughs> we can't do that much. But um, I think it's definitely the adult's decision right now, and I hope that they um, realize how much it affects us, um, their nieces, their nephews, their kids. It's, it's serious. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> the same thing. Um, people who vote, even if they don't have a daughter or son or a niece or nephew, think of the children in the community and how those children are going to grow up and eventually shape the community that they live in. How those people will be in charge. And think about how this is such a, a prevalent problem in our society because without, if people keep getting killed um, by acts of gun violence in schools, then how will that shape the society in the future?